Okay, guys. We are going to be shooting this uh, Howell Model 1500. This is chassis rifle, American flag theme. Uh, pretty cool little rifle, carbon fiber barrel. Uh, we had it out the range before and I had some weather issues and everything, had to leave. Uh, so I didn't get any good footage, but let's go ahead and shoot uh, some groups just for factory ammo. I already did shoot this and made a bonehead move and didn't record my scope cam footage. So we're going to reshoot these three groups. That way I have something synced up on film. I apologize, guys. Um, is what it is. You big dummy. So let's go shoot these three again. And then I've got to move on to a different rifle that uh, I've got to run through. It's another 6.5, the Savage Model 10. Y'all stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll go from there. So uh, let me get some of the stuff out of the way. Got my monitor here to kind of give me a reference. I am recording. I can see that I'm recording. Uh, but you know what? Just gives me more time behind the trigger, right? So this first one, Fioshi. Uh, this is the 6.5 Creedmoor, 129 grain, pointed soft point, 28, 20 feet per second. And let me redo this. I already kind of know how they're grouping anyway, but you know what? Let's see uh, if it improves any. Factory ammo, you never know. We start doing low development. Hopefully we can get a lot more consistency. I have not ran this uh, ammo through the chronograph and I really, I just don't feel like setting up the chronograph. I do have it in the Jeep there, uh, but uh, we're gonna forego and wait till we do load development. Then we'll bring out the chronograph and really start doing some serious testing. This is just what you can get uh, on the store shelves. And uh, I wanted you to see this gun untouched, unmolested with the factory scope factory bipod uh, did not do anything with the trigger everything is factory on here uh, i haven't done any work to this gun so this is just as it's going to come out of the box to you we do have it i did have it bore sided in matter of fact i went ahead and shot some groups with it so uh we know that it's on paper so we're good uh i'm gonna shoot these down there uh it does have the naco sterling 4 to 16 scope on it this is what it comes with probably be swapping that out for a little bit higher scope because i will be probably shooting this longer ranges uh, so this is probably going to go um, but i want to show you what it does out of the box with what they offer with this gun how you'll get it so uh, at least y'all know what's uh what to expect if you uh, have this gun the one we're gonna go for the right side targets and we are going to start top and go down the first three All right, first three rounds of Fioshi, uh, and we'll measure those up at the shop, and you'll get to see exactly how they are. I'll actually pull the first target, show you what they shot as well. We'll do a little comparison, see if it's improved uh, or if it's about the same. Factory ammo, uh, since we're not chronographing, I have no idea what the standard deviation is, so uh, it is what it is. Okay, next, we're going to go with the Hornady American Whitetail. It is also 129 grains. It actually has the same uh, muzzle velocity, 28, 20 feet per second. This is what it shows it's rated at. Uh, this is about the same load dynamics as far as uh, the bullets. It's a uh, pointed soft point. Again, these are uh, boxes of ammo. You can just find at most of your local uh, sporting goods stores. So uh, that's what we're testing today. And I'm probably going to be running exclusively, mainly reloads through this and do load development and see what she likes. But uh, we want to see if you bought this gun and bought factory am loaded ammo, what she'll do out of the box. So that's what we're doing today. All right. American Whitetail.
let me accurate it for those of y'all that want to go hunt with this but uh I don't know. I don't like what I'm seeing with this factory ammo. Well, they're grouped all there together, so pretty close. So we'll go down there shortly and see what she looks like. Okay, next is going to be the uh, Hornady. This is the ELD match. Now, this is a 140 grain offering. So uh, let's see uh, how legendary accurate this is supposed is going to be so i shoot this in my 300 prc and i'm fixing to do low development on that uh works out really good out to a thousand uh having high hopes for this but uh all this we're just gonna have to play around and see what this gun likes in the end and then we'll load to that we're probably not going to be shooting factory ammo except for this test. Again, guys, I think we could have a little bit better groups and everything if we had a better bipod or front rest. I could put it in the lead sled, do a lot better, I'm sure, but this is out of the box with their offerings. All right, we're going to go down range. We're going to pull those targets and see how she looks. Okay, guys, we're going to go down. We're going to pull these targets. I'm going to put some new ones up for the uh, Savage that I got to test. And uh, might do a little bit more shooting with this today. Don't know if I get it on camera or not, but uh, definitely want to play with this gun a little bit more. I need to fire form some more brass. I need to count my rounds, see what I got, because uh, I want some fireform brass to this gun uh, for this chamber and uh, kind of go from there. That way when I'm working on my load development, I'll have all the statistics and everything uh, and measurements. Uh, got my grandson in the background shooting his uh, Savage uh, open sight, his little rascal, ringing some steel over there, nine-year-old, doing really good, supervised by grandma, so uh, she's got him going. All right, let's go down range, and uh, we'll pull these targets. We'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the shop, guys. Appreciate y'all uh, watching today. All right, everyone, we're back from the range, and we uh, did our testing on the uh, Howa 1500 chassis rifle. Again, this is American flag theme. Pretty cool rifle, 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, you guys got to see uh, firsthand uh, shooting it. Uh, this is the setup if you bought this particular rifle uh, or ordered it in, bought it at the store, whatever. And uh, this is what you get. You would wind up getting your Nico Sterling. Uh, this is a uh, 4 to 16 power scope. Uh, not a terrible scope. It's okay. Uh, I'm going to have to get used to reticle in it. It's so so. Uh, so it's, it's not too bad. Uh, there's some things I don't like about the scope. Uh, I may get used to it. So it's just going to be uh, user preference. You know, uh, I'm a reviewer for Vector Optics. So I probably wind up throwing a Vector on here. Uh, I do like the reticles and stuff. Their glass clarity is actually a little bit better than this. So I do like that. Actually, their glass clarity and their Paragon and their Continental is a really a uh, ton better than this one right here. So uh, I'll probably be changing it out. Uh, the bipod, you know, I'm not really sold on this bipod. You know, I've tried to tighten it up and stuff like that. Uh, it's probably one of the weak points. I probably could have shot better off of a bag or off of a rest and got a lot better groups and everything. And we're fixing to go over the groups and everything we got. Uh, but I just wanted to give you my initial impressions. I think this, uh, again, has a lot of potential. So I am going to go ahead and do load development. Matter of fact, uh, 
this is actually being filmed a few days later i've already uh, got some uh, ammo loaded up we're going to be going back to the range with this rifle and uh doing our load work up so i can already tell you i'm going to be going with the 147 grain uh, this is how i do my bags uh, these are actually just uh what i call burn in uh, bullets right here just to take a couple of shots before we start shooting groups and stuff uh but this one uh we're gonna do in 140 and 147 grain uh, hornady eld match uh bullets and that's what we're gonna run through here and see if we can get a good load for this uh, it does have a lot of potential uh it's not shooting too bad I was hoping for a little bit tighter groups with the factory ammo, but it is what it is. So, you know, you just kind of deal with it and uh, you've got to go into it knowing that every gun, even if you get the same exact model gun, it's going to sh shoot different uh, depending on the ammunition. A lot of times uh, you're going to have to find out what it likes. It may like one particular uh, ammo better than the other when you're dealing with factory ammo. Uh, and that's pretty consistent among all rifles uh and that's nothing new and i'm probably going to just do reloads mainly for this once i find a load that it likes and that's what i'm going to run with but i did want to go and show you all some of the factory uh ammo options that you can just get off the shelf and that's what most people are going to do they're going to buy something from the store go shoot it and they're going to base their opinion off of that whether they like it or not um I think it has a lot of potential, especially when we start doing uh, load development on it. I'm really excited to see how this uh, performs for us. A couple of changes that I will make, uh, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, UM Tactical and try to get a uh, Rage Muzzle Brake because I've got one on the Savage Model 10 GRS. So go check it out. I'm actually going to be testing it out on uh, the 300 PRC as well. Super, super muzzle brake. I really like it. I think that... Uh, that would be awesome on here. It doesn't have a whole lot of recoil as it is, but I think it'd even take out a whole lot more uh, and probably get rid of this cheesy little muzzle brake. Yeah, I mean, it, it works, but uh, not my preference. So that's one uh, thing that I'll do. So the scope and the muzzle brake and a better bipod is probably all I'm going to do to this rifle. I'm just going to shoot it after that. Um, and we're going to work this... Uh, load development out and then we're going to start shooting at different distances and we're going to take it all the way a thousand yards and see how it performs at that point i'm really going to decide you know hey do we keep this gun uh do we get rid of it get something else in it just depends uh if i like it we're going to keep it i uh, i really hope that it's going to be one of those guns that we decide we like uh it's a pretty cool gun uh I may at some point, if I decide to keep it, actually re -seracote. A lot of people, hey, I'm not uh, unpatriotic at all. I love uh, the U.S. I'm a Navy veteran, and uh, I like patriotic themes and stuff. Uh, but for the rifle, I mean, it looks cool on here. But to me, I'd rather just have, you know, a matte black finish or flat uh, darker or something like that. So I may be changing this up to accommodate that. You know, this is what uh, the offering was when I bought it in the store with this particular stock. So it is what it is, but I can make those changes really easily here uh, and do all that work myself and uh, get this gun if I decide to keep it looking the way I want it to look. So that's all it looks. Right now we're uh, more concerned with performance. So let's talk about the groups. Yeah, it's... Uh, did to you guys in this video i shot two sets of groups the first set of groups i did have it on record uh but i did not have the scope cam on and i really wanted the scope cam to be on and instead of just shooting groups again and just trying to sync up all that and show you well this is what it did the first time uh but this is how it's performing i went ahead and just shot the entire uh groups again actually instead of shooting uh three different ammos with uh three shot groups just once i wound up doing it twice so you know what give us more trigger time and kind of give us an idea how the ammo is performing each time um we did not chronograph it now when we do low development i will be chronographing everything got an ammo box full already here of ammo ready to go uh work on my load development everything and see what this likes so we're gonna get back up the range pretty soon check out that video and we'll see uh now this is uh i believe the first round that i did 
This one right here was just a cider. Uh, but the first three on Fioshi Ammo, we did a 1.76 uh, is the group on that. And then on the next one, let's see. Trying to go through these was the uh, American Hunter. And it was a 1.266 on that. I'll try to get some close-ups for y'all to see these. And then the Hornady Match, the first go-around, uh, was 0.894. So we got uh, sub-MOA on Hornady Match. We got about an inch and a quarter on the uh, Hornady American Hunter, the Fioshi. Uh, it wasn't performing too well, uh, that first group. But you'll see on the second group where I actually got the entire recording, which I went ahead and put out the first of this video, it shot a 1.075. So it almost shot a one-inch group. Uh, if I would have been a little more stable, I really feel that could have been a sub-MOE group. However, a lot of factors involved in that, uh, since we didn't chronograph and do a batch test of this, a lot test of this ammo, we don't know what the standard deviation is, but going from a 1.76 to 1.075, um, that almost cut it in half. Not quite, but, you know, pretty close. Then again, on the uh, American Hunter, it did a 1.235. So uh, comparing it uh, to the 1.266, it actually shot better the second time around uh, on uh, that as well. So that's pretty cool. And then on the uh, Hornady match, 0.889 for the second. So from 0.894 to 0.889, it shot better on this one as well. So just a little bit tighter. So it looks like the match, it really likes the match. Uh, so it likes the 140 grain. That's what I'm going with is 140. I actually got uh, my load development worked up for that. And I got my load development worked out for 147. Um, to me, I think it likes that way to bullet. Now we got to find out, is it going to like the powder that I'm using, which is H4350 is what I'm going to be running in it. And uh, I'm going to be using Magnum rifle primers because that's all I've got in stock for large rifle primers right now. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, and I'm doing half grain increments uh, from uh, start weight to max weight. And we'll go from there. I really don't want to push the envelope of pressures right off the bat on this gun. Um, so using Magnum primers, uh, usually you want to back off, you know, maybe a half a grain or so when you do that kind of uh loads and stuff if you're using that um but we're going to go ahead and we're going to run it through like we're using standard primers um and we're going to kind of get our numbers off of that because right now that's what i've got so i've got a bunch of magnum primers and that's probably what i'm going to be loading with so we're going to get our data off that and i don't think even at the higher end on our max uh, levels i don't think we're going to have too much pressure issues. We'll find out. As we go up, if I see pressure signs and stuff, I'll stop at that point and back back down. Uh, that's just part of the load development and everything. And we may be able to break that envelope and go up just a little bit, uh, but I don't know how much further above that I want to go. I'd like to find something in that safe range and kind of stick with it, especially if I can find something with my SDs um, and the extreme spreads and everything. Uh, at a good consistent and low rate so we'll see uh so y'all stay tuned uh for the uh video coming up for doing the load development part i don't know if i'm going to do everything in one video for the 140 and 147 i might break that into two videos we'll see uh try to just keep it kind of manageable for you guys um so y'all look for that i'm also going to be doing load development on a savage uh model 10 grs law enforcement y'all check that out Actually, uh, y'all check out that video. I actually shot it the same day, used the same exact ammo and everything. And the results was interesting because it absolutely hated a couple of the rounds. But the Hornady match, wow, it liked the Hornady match. It did better than this gun. So uh, there's a lot of promise with that. So y'all go check out that video if y'all want to see uh, another 6.5 Creedmoor. 
uh, that we got here and uh, see how it's going to perform as well. And like I say, we're going to do low development on that gun as well. Exactly the same way. Matter of fact, I just doubled my batch of ammo. Uh, I've got probably 140 rounds loaded up right now for those two guns. Uh, so we're going to shoot about 70 rounds in each gun, get our data. And once we find a few loads that we really like, and then we'll kind of build our load development around those and kind of fine tune stuff. And then we'll see if we want stuff like changing out the muzzle brake, maybe putting a tuner uh, on one of these guns. I don't know if we're really going to put a tuner on these. We'll see. If I consistently shoot out to a thousand, I think I need something that's really going to tighten stuff up even more. We might dive in and go down that rabbit hole at a later date. So just want to show you today, guys. Uh, the uh, targets i'm going to put those up on the screen and uh hey i like it i think it's a pretty cool rifle like i say there's a few little quirks about it i don't like but overall i like it i think it's a good rifle i think it'd be a good choice if you're looking for something uh being a chassis rifle if you're looking for a chassis rifle uh, the price point's not too bad i think it's pretty good uh this offering you get a carbon fiber barrel it does come in a steel barrel as well uh, it does come in 308 if you want a 308 and you don't want a 6.5 Creedmoor. It'd probably be a little easier to get ammo for it if you got a 308. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, I really did want to get some 6.5 Creedmoors in here. I've got 308, so I just wanted something a little bit different. So now I've got two 6.5 Creedmoors to play around with. And you're going to see a lot more of those videos on the channel, us working those up. Uh, shooting those at distance and then i'm going to find out which gun i really like the best so i'm going to put these guns head to head the savage model 10 grs and uh because it's got its its quirks too things i like and don't like and we're going to put it against this uh, howa 1500 chassis rifle and then i'll give you my overall opinion which one i like best and maybe some takeaways uh what i like about you know maybe one over the other so and why one might win out so stay tuned for that information and guys if you're subscribed thank you so much if you're not subscribed please consider subscribing hitting that thumbs up i would greatly appreciate it and as always i will catch you on the next episode